You know what? I think these guys will be a perfect start for my new Age of Sigmar army. What's up everybody, I am Xerxes, you're in my workshop, and in this video we are painting Dread Pageant, Servants of the Dark Prince Slanish from Warhammer and the World's Diacasm boxed set. Ooh, painting these guys and uh, making the video took a lot longer than I expected, most likely due to Christmas slash New Year's Eve laziness. I mean, you can tell by the amount of hair that I've got on my head and on my face. So let's not waste time any longer and let's get right to it. The assembly was pretty simple. All the models are push fit and consist of about three to five parts. The only two issues I encountered were some fiddly and slightly fragile parts on the slangor, and one quite massive gap under the armpit of Hadzu the Archer. I mounted every model on a cork and I primed it with Stylon Res Black Primer. The idea is to use a black primer as a basis of the whole color scheme. I want to slightly tint some of the areas with different colors to achieve darker and more sinister look than the one that GW offers. Now I'm not going full dirty grim dark blanchitsu here. I want something clean but a little bit different. The majority of paints that I'm going to be using come from the scale 75 range. Why? Because why not? And I need to learn how to use them properly. And most of the colors I'll be needing come from that range. Since I had my airbrush warmed up and ready, I decided to do the first step with it. I made a mix of Antares Red, Sunset Purple, some Flow Improver and Glaze Medium. If I remember correctly, the ratios were one part red, one part purple, two parts glaze medium, and six parts flow improver. I used the mix to base coat all the pants, tabards, and capes. Yet again, the idea was to tint the undercoat so that only a little bit of a color is visible. In order to create some shadows, I used a mix of one part purple, one part glaze medium and three parts flow improver and I sprayed all the fabric from the bottom and applied it to some of the recesses. And with that I was done with the airbrush for this project. With the fabric ready I moved to painting the skin. I used the same mix of colors with the same proportions but this time without the glaze medium create a solid base coat. While I was at it, I also painted the Slangor's claw with purple. After the base coat had dried, I started the layering process. I progressively kept adding more and more Scale 75 basic flesh to the mix to paint lighter and smaller areas up to the final layer of pure basic flesh. I also added a little bit of uh, glaze medium to each layer to make them a little bit more transparent. I approached the leather with the same mindset as the fabric. Black undercoat with a slight tint of paint. For this I used deep blue as the first highlight and navy blue as a second highlight. Yet again, the paints are mixed with glaze medium to give me extra transparency and control. The main idea is to create the illusion of a black bluish leather. Perfect for these depraved warriors. I use this method for painting all the straps, belts, corsets, ties and boots. Having finished the three biggest areas of the models, I moved to more detailed and smaller elements. I painted all the tassels, mohawks and hair with a mix of one part Adriatic blue and one part boreal green. 
I wanted to recreate parts of the paint scheme that I used for my Emperor's children. You know, different universe, same cultists kind of thing. After the base coat dried, I painted some highlights with white sands added to the paint mix. I decided to lump all the fur, horns and hooves together and I base coated them with graphene grey with a little bit of white sands added to the mix. I quickly cracked open Iroko and base coated leather straps on spears. Then I dry brushed everything with white sands. I liked it so much that I even dry brushed the turquoise elements as well. To differentiate bone from hair a bit, I created a very thin glaze of white sands and a teeny tiny smidge of graphene grey. At this point there is actually more glaze medium than paint in the mix. I used it to slightly tint the horns and hooves on the slangle. Time for metallics! I really want to make a nebula copper from Green Stuff World pretty much a staple for all my slanish units for both uh, 40k and Age of Sigma. So I found a way to incorporate uh, this paint into the paint scheme. I used it on the shield, pauldrons and metal masks of the models. It took about four to five layers, but I eventually achieved a nice uniform coat that I was happy with. Gold is probably the most prominent metallic element on these guys. I decided to stick with the scale 75 range and I used Dwarven Gold for the trim and the jewellery. I had to paint two layers to get a new uniform look. So you can imagine that it took a while. Not as bad as the trim on Chaos Space Marines though. All standard metallics were painted using my standard method. Vallejo Metal Color Steel as a base coat followed by a dry brush of Vallejo Metal Color Silver and then Scale 75 Speed Metal. I painted all the blades, Vasilax helmet, spear shafts, build buckles and a whole bazillion of studs and doctags looking ornaments. To finish off the models I decided to tint the dogtag slash scales, adornments, ornaments, whatever you call them. For that I used a very thin glaze that the mix of Adriatic blue and boreal green had turned to over the past couple of days I think. I'm not really sure what they are and what purpose they serve, but it's Warhammer. Very few things make sense. Usually my last step of painting minis is washing. For this project I mixed three oil washes. Magenta, brown and black. The first wash that I used was a mixture of four parts magenta, all parts brown and one part black. I shaded the skin with it. Next all the gold elements were washed with brown and everything else was washed with black. After leaving models to dry for about 12 hours or so, I removed the excess wash by using various brushes dipped in mineral spirits. I kept doing it until I was pretty much happy with the result. Now this time I decided to bite the bullet and try my most hated technique of them all. I decided to edge highlight some of the final touches on the minis. So I used Vallejo polished gold to trim all the gold elements. Silver 
to highlight metal elements and a mix of Adriatic blue, boreal green and white sands in equal proportions to highlight black leather. I also used a mix of Antares red, sunset purple and white sands to edge highlight all the fabric elements like pants, tabards and capes, as well as scars on Vasilak's body. And there they are, done. Overall I'm happy with the result, but I've got a feeling that something is missing. I'm not sure what though. If you have an idea what, let me know down in the comments. And edge highlights look kinda shit, but to be perfectly honest, the only way to make them better is to keep doing them. There's just no other way. And that's it for today. Don't forget to hit that like button or subscribe for the glory of the almighty algorithm. And I'll see you in the next one.